Ooh, we're getting a lot of people. <laughs> people. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello, everybody. Hello there. Hello. Hello. General Kenobi. <laughs> oh, wicked. We've got Joe Biden with us. Stop, Trez. Hi, <laughs> Sega Mew. Okay, so shall we get started on this? <laughs> Welcome everyone to the Q&A with Team Season 3. I'm your host, Leah. <laughs> and of course, I have my amazing co-host, Andrew HVA. Hello. And we have Keith Roselle and Jacob Berkeley from Team Season 3. Why don't you guys introduce yourselves? Hello, sure. Shall I uh, go first? So... Uh, I'm Keith, so I'm the animation director on Team Season 3, and I'm a professional animator who's been in the animation industry for like 13, 14 years. I've uh, worked on stuff like The Amazing World of Gumball, Wolf Walkers, Skull Girls, and many other things of whack too. Uh, yeah, so I hope my experience can help uh, deliver decent product <laughs> to everyone okay pass on to jake uh hi i'm jake i am uh, i'm in the process of I, i've joined team season three fairly recently uh i am helping with both um interviews and also the youtube channel and according to M, I am their lore expert <laughs> apparently i I have been a Sadium fan for years, and I have notably started the Sadium Historian Project, which is a essentially a project documenting all of Sadium's history into one book entitled The Complete History of Sonic Sadium. Uh, and just recently, uh, I have been brought aboard season three. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> we love you for it. <laughs> um, and Thanks. Okay, so do you want to start with this Q&A? Andrew, do you have any questions for, for Jake and Keith here? Uh, I have one about the animation. Um, how long does it take to do, like, per frame, the, to animate it? Oh, That's a key sure. Um, yes, def definitely. Definitely a Keith question. Well, <laughs> first off, I was going to say, could we introduce Andrew, since you're also involved in the Team Season project? Uh, yes, yes, I am. I think that would be cool. Uh, yes, I and voice. I'll get back to it. <laughs> yes, I I provide the voice of Snively in the in the project, and uh, it's been a blast. It's been fun, and uh, yeah, it's, it's it's been great. <laughs> That's amazing. We'll be requesting Snively impressions later on. Uh, you can only do this interview in exclusively the Snively voice. No exceptions. <laughs> oh well. So, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll get back to that question. So let me see my good order now. Sorry. Um, the the how long does it take to do a frame? Yeah, it's a bit tricky to answer because uh, it's like how long is a piece of string in a sense? But um, well, I'll, I'll be I'll be streaming as I animate a scene so you probably get an idea that you know it can take uh between some seconds to do a quick in between like a rough animation to like um 15 minutes to do clean up or half an hour to clean up a drawing depending um yeah it can take a while it can be very quick oh, wow okay. wow <clears throat> Because I I have seen some of your I I noticed that you stream in at times Keith about when you're animating and and I see how it's like I, I love the work in progress that you um that you show to to people because I I think you were like animating the pilot right for that when you do those yes, streams yes correct the pilot episode yeah it's like a twenty minute long. Or 21, 22, including the, the intro, minute long show. So it's, it's a lot of work. <laughs> That's really cool. <laughs> um, so if you, got, um, if you guys have any questions, raise your hand and we will call you up if you want to ask Keith and Jake any questions about her team season three. Mm. 
Yeah, of course. So far, one, there's one hand so far. <laughs> okay. We'll That's go, a good start. <laughs> okay. We'll go um, invite Jack and Sally. Come on up here. Hello. Hello. Oh, okay. Looks like, okay. We have a little trick on what to work, how to get this done. Okay. Okay. Are you there, Sally? Yeah. Oh. Oh, that is real. What is going on? <laughs> I hear nothing. <laughs> oh, yeah, my. me neither. Oh, that is weird. Um, okay, let me leave and come back. Okay. Let me see what is going on here. Um, but but tell us about more about the animation process, Keith. Like, um, about like in terms of keyframing, um, because I've seen like the gesture, the facial expressions you do. <laughs> Me or the character? Yeah. Um, sure. So, yes, yeah, starting from the beginning, this is, I've got it streaming now if anyone wants to check it out. So, Gloria, the director uh, and the voice of Bunny Rabbit, um, drew these uh, and, and animated in a sense the animatic with some storytelling sketches. So, basically, so like they're lifting his arms and then the swap bot comes on and picks them up. So I'll basically just draw those keys for now and I've got to match up, got to make sure I hook up with this drawing from the previous scene. Oops, we got back. Yeah, this drawing of Sonic here where he's a bit sad and down. So I have to make sure I draw that pose here on it. And once I've done all those main key poses, I draw the rest of the drawings in between to say how well, do we get from this pose to this pose, pose A to pose B, and pose C and pose D. And I've noticed with this cartoon there's a lot of bouncing, squashing, stretching. Good fun. Mm -hmm. I hope that was clear for people. Maybe maybe not that clear. Mm. That's that's so interesting because I love um I love I always love um learning about the animation process and, and and you guys do such a great job at capturing the actual um um the actual aesthetic and art style you know like it, it kind of just feels like you know it's just with more um more fresh with with more fresh actual um with with it like it looks clean you know <laughs> like it look like yeah, you can tell yeah Thanks. No, it's um, mostly down to uh, going back to the original model sheets. The model sheets are essential. These these model sheets here, for example, uh, these are turnarounds more specifically, are essential in getting the correct proportions and everything. And then I look through the episode to see how they drew um, expressions. It's a bit of research. Uh, and the clean aesthetic, yeah, I guess that's just down to modern technology because you don't, we're not doing it on film and taking photos of, of film anymore. We did it directly onto a computer using programs. So in a way, it's inevitable unless we, you know, spend a, a lot of time trying to recreate that traditional analog aesthetic. Mm. That is good <clears throat> fun. Ooh, that that's really that's really cool. <clears throat> um, okay, let's try this again. Let's try yeah, to let's bring try, up. I bring someone up. <laughs> okay, let's try to bring up Sally again. Hopefully, this works. <laughs> oh, Sally, Can you guys hear me? There you go. Hey, yeah. There we go. Hey. Yes. Hello. It's a, Hello, it's a Halloween miracle. <laughs> it's a Halloween miracle. <laughs> Anyways, how are y'all doing today? Doing pretty good. Doing yeah. all right. Andrew, it's been a while. Oh, my man. How are yeah. you doing? I'm not too bad. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. How you doing? I'm doing all right. It's been an honor to see the team season three in here. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. I actually got a... a Good question for both of you. Ooh, um, how in the world did you invite the lead singer of a Crush 40, Johnny Gioli, 
he uh, to do the opening music for Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, I think um, so. I'm, I'm answering all of these, <laughs> Jake. I'll, I'll let you go. <laughs> so uh, basically, just um, got a member on that team got the contact info from my Twitter account and and emailed. Uh, he has an agent, so he emailed the agent and um, just essentially asked him if he would, wouldn't mind recording for a fan project. We told him about it, how, you know, how commercial it would be, how much of a fan project it would be, you know, just to be upfront with him. And um, we had, he wanted to check out our music arrangements uh, first to see if it was up to, you know, his standards but obviously he wasn't going to attach his name just to do anything and then dirty his reputation in a sense i guess which i can understand as an artist um but we're lucky we had uh we had nestor estrada who's a very talented uh Dewey. musician and composer yes i Chewy actually uh is this god name. Mm. I actually interviewed chewy a while back and i actually have his oh, uh, yeah, direct quotes on his uh you know, experience working on it, shall I share it? Yeah, 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 please do. Be interesting. According to mm -hmm. Chewie, it was really exciting to reimagine the Sadie theme. theme. Uh, early on, the team and him talked about what it what they wanted. Uh, sorry, I'll just go directly from his quotes. Did we want 100% oh, sure. recreation of the original, or did we want to focus on modernizing it? it uh, we chose the latter. The original used a ton of synthesizers, I still wanted to incorporate synths, but felt it needed a bit of a heavier punch to do it via distorted electric guitars. This is directly inspired by Crush 40, and what they've done for the franchise. But I didn't want to go too heavy, as I felt taking it too far in that direction would lose the essence of what made the original so great. There's a balance I had to juggle. Go too far, and the fans will hate it. But do an exact recreation, and we don't show any personal identity, and that's something that's super important to me. Having Johnny record the vocals was fantastic. I remember when I got all of his takes and was editing them. I just had the thought of, wow, I'm actually working with Johnny. It was pretty wild. And Johnny's a pretty chill guy, too. Very easy to communicate with. As far as direction for the song, we pretty much told him to listen to the original, but do his own take. As long yes. as it was recognizable, he could do whatever he wanted. I don't like restricting the musicians I work with. Yeah, there has to be a bit of general guidance, but if you don't give them the freedom to do what they're good at, why hire them in the first place? This is 100% his interpretation of the song and style of singing. I think the final track turned out extremely well. Ooh, and that's the reason why we like the uh, the remake version of The Fastest Thing Alive. I've, uh, and I gotta say, it was a banger from Blast from the Past. Yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's amazing. Johnny was great, and Chewie's instrumental was also fantastic. Yeah, shout out to him. I ho I hope he gets better soon. Who mm. not? Yeah, yeah. I believe fun. that's all I gotta say. Hey, uh, keep up the good work, and we we will see uh, your Sat AM season three either on YouTube and keep on rocking. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. Can I just add that? That um, I love that little uh, flair Johnny added to the song, where there's a part where it says, "Watch out when he comes through," or something like that. And, uh, John, <laughs> um, exactly. excuse me, it's when he storms through. Exactly. There we go. I know. Yeah, I there we go. Anyway. An emoji moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Jake. Um, Johnny Joy Joy and he managed to uh, incorporate this uh, very interesting bit. It's, it's just a small thing. It just says, "You better <laughs> just before watch out." He's like, "You better watch out." And it's like, "Oh, this is so cool." <laughs> so that was it. Really. Ah, I see. Sorry, sorry about <laughs> the background. It's some it's some bike like rolling out. <laughs> oh, I didn't even notice. <laughs> anyway. Hey, so that's all I got to say. Like I said, keep on rocking, and we will see the Team Season 3 Sonic at AM on YouTube. Yeah. You will. <laughs> Until then, happy yeah. Halloween. Bye. You too. Thank happy you Halloween. Much. Happy Halloween. Oh.
Oh, okay. Um, Andrew, would you like to pick the next audience member? Yes. Uh, let's see. Let's go for Goken. Come on up. Hi. I just hit the rates hand button and I merely got it. But thank you. Also, how are you all doing, Leah, Andrew? Yeah, not too bad. Excited to be here. Good to see you all again after so long. So without further ado, I'd like to say hello to Mr. Jake and Keith. It is an honor to speaking with you for the first time ever. Hello. Likewise. Thanks. Yes, yeah, Sonic Sat AM happens to be the best cartoon of all time in the, when it comes to Sonic series. And unfortunately, we all have to say that the third season got canceled. But I'm going to have to say thank you very much for making this as possible as it as it can be. So I'm actually wanting to know. So I'm going to ask a question about about the series. I'm really curious about what inspired you you all to make to make this make this possible, and when did the development start? You want me to go over the history of the se- of season three? Yeah, that that would be great. Yeah, go for it. Okay, so season three did not start with the current uh, season three animated project. In fact, it started all the way back. In 2001, in 2001, uh, uh, Fans United for Sat AM, uh, which uh, well, in 2001, Fans United for Sat AM, the website came into existence, run by Allison Charlemagne or Charlemagne. Sorry. Uh, essentially, it was a website dedicated to the fight to get Sat AM back on the air and also to get the series released on DVD. At the time, it was pretty... A lot of people didn't have faith that the series would be coming back. Uh, Especially Allison, who was in talks with Ben at the time, and knew about the unfortunate sabotage thing that happened. I don't know if you want me to go into that or not, but it's not really relevant to this. Essentially, uh, it didn't seem likely that Season 3 was going to happen. So, they decided to make their own Season 3, based on what they knew of Ben Hurst's notes. It was very minimal notes, like about a paragraph's worth, but they decided to make a comic based on uh, what was known of those notes. It was essentially known uh, at the time. It was just called the third season comic, but the artist of the first issue's cover decided to position the three in the middle of the season, placing the S. From then onwards, it became known as season three with the three in the middle of the season. The comic was ambitious. Um, it was not great. Uh, I'm not trying to be rude. It's simply that it wasn't really organized very well. The comic had multiple different writers, even if it had a same basic plot outline for the entire thing. And quite unfortunately, instead of doing it to where at least, you know, maybe one person did most of the art of most of the pages or most or at least one person a page, they assigned people different panels, which meant that pretty much every panel had an art shift. Every like three or four panels, the art changed completely. And it was not great looking. Early season three comic really suffered from very inconsistent art and it's kind of it was I'm not bashing it because it was very good for its time. It was very ambitious. It's just it had a lot of problems and ended up having a lot of production issues. Uh, The project changed hands multiple times. Uh, Writers constantly came in and were getting replaced. New artists came in and out. It just was kind of a bit of a mess production wise. And so it ended up being canceled or just pretty much abandoned around 2005 to 2006. Though that there was, in fact, one sort of revival, not actually connected to Fuss, where someone decided to make a sprite animated version of that comic, which, believe it or not, is arguably the first incarnation of season three animated, even though it's not necessarily connected to any of the modern ones. So that as well didn't end up going far, and unfortunately, it's lost media now. Later on, 
uh, later in the 2000s, uh, Fuss would switch hands from Allison to Rocky Raccoon. Rocky would decide to reboot the season three comic from scratch, and he got a writer, Gojira 07, also known as Eric Mason, on board. That unfortunately did not also go anywhere, and eventually Rocky Raccoon decided to give the website to uh, Paul and drawn a blank. Who's the other guy who owned us? One second, let me just check. I just want to make sure I don't get this wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid I, I, I won't be able to help. I wasn't around in the FUS days. Hands to Paul and John, John Roberts. Uh, and they decided to revive the season three reboot project, which led to essentially, yep, John Roberts. It essentially led to, uh, they, they kept Eric Mason on board the season three project, basically. And stuff was changed, mainly in the original draft then three comic. Metal Sonic was going to be the Red Eyes, which was not accurate to Ben's notes, nor was it accurate to Ron Merrick's original intention. Uh, but Paul essentially persuaded him to go more for what was one of Ben's notes at the time. And so season three, the comic was reborn with uh, Salamander as the artist. And it would go on for quite a few years. Eric Mason would stay the writer throughout the entire thing. Uh, essentially, uh, the comic would change artists every so often. Uh, it was originally by Salamander, also known as Terry. Then it moved to Saber 16. Then it moved to Tim, Cam Tim J. Campbell. And now it is currently under Rigo. Uh, with color with coloring uh, done by I believe Nex at least currently, and Laura was and Laura was the person before Nex doing the coloring. Uh, gosh, sorry if I'm just going on and on about this, but essentially, uh, there was the first incarnation of season three animated as we know it started in 2013 to 2014 when Matt of Tales Channel got in contact with uh, the pe with uh, the people making season three, including Paul. And essentially it was the first they were trying to get season three adapted into animated form. It was also kind of a mess production wise because they really didn't know what they were doing. Paul actually told me that they really didn't know what they were doing when they were doing it. They got as far as a proof of concept trailer which would actually be uh, shown to people like Ian Flynn, Roger Craig Smith uh, at a Sonic convention and would end up being reused as the first uh, proof of concept trailer for the modern season three animated project. I don't know if you guys have seen it. Essentially, it's of Sonic and Sally having a little banter uh, before, you know, talking about Nogus coming back and all that. And that was about where the project ended. And they did have a lot of voice actors on board, including some that would be retained over for the new incarnation. But and why can I not, why can I not speak right now? Uh, it just didn't really go anywhere. And it's probably most well known nowadays for the season three audio plays, which are I mean, they're a product of their time. <laughs> they're very silly. They're the voice actors just goofing around. A lot of memes are in them. Yeah, so, you know, that fell through. And then around 2018 to 2019, uh, they decided to give season three animated another go. Uh, but this time they were going to do it right. They were going to get actual contacts in the industry. They were going to get professional animators. They were going to get people who knew what they were doing and overall just did it in a much more organized way. I think Keith can take over for me from here. Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, well, uh, I think one of the uh, the members, the original members, uh, with Paul contacted Gloria, and uh, she essentially became the director and uh, storyboard artist. So the one I showed your the drawing of before, um, and she's she's great. She was a student at the time. Um, I think she, and then she you know graduated soon after. And yeah, I saw some snippets online um, and I saw how well the animatic was and how excellent the voices were. And I just thought, yeah, I, I want to get involved in this because 
And I thought they could use a bit of um, insight from an industry professional. And yeah, and I joined them. I asked if I could join. They said they're the more unhappy. And yeah, been helping since. Right. Um, wonderful. That's really wonderful. Yeah, like thank you for thank you for sharing everything. But yeah, so so do you know what like is there like a estimate date of when will the first episode come out? Yeah, we're kind of aiming to get the animation finished by around the end of the year, beginning of next year, and then we need to get it cleaned up and composited, and and then edited. So we're aiming by the end of uh, sometime next year. Mm -hmm. I see. Take as much time as you need because I know because you want to make sure that every the quality is more important, and we are looking forward to the premiere of of the third season made by made by you guys. So yes, thank you. So I really hope you have a wonderful weekend, and thank you for answering my answering this long question. <laughs> well, you see, thanks for the for the long question. <laughs> I mean, anyways, yeah. All right, I'm going to hop off, and you all have a wonderful day. You have a wonderful day, too. See you. Okay. Sorry if I was, my, my answer was long. Oh, no, you're all good. <laughs> all good. Good, good. Good stuff. I will bring up M up here. There. Hopefully, M is there. Oh, you don't have any mic. Okay. <laughs> um, you can um, you can put your question in either the side chat or mm. Mm. okay. Um, okay, you don't have a question. Okay. Um, okay, we'll probably choose. Um, we'll bring up. Let me see up here. Hey. Oh, you're, oh, you're muted. Hey. I just want to point out, uh, you mispronounced my name. It's Levi. Oh, Levi. Okay. That's Thank fine. You. Uh, my question, though, is a little bit of a sillier question, so I'll probably have a quick answer. Um, since uh, last year's game, Sonic Frontiers, did have Sad AM references in it, do you think you would ever incorporate any Sonic Frontiers references into Season 3, at least the um Yes, I should answer. Uh, I, I I don't want to guess on Eric's behalf because Eric is the writer, and we each he, he would have the final decisions and all that sort of stuff. But uh, as far as references go, probably probably not. Um, I know we did some character references from the Archies. Uh, see if it's things like Fiona Fox or something, and some. I think Jennifer Hernandez, I believe that's the name, uh, had some original characters that she's a friend with uh, Tim and they uh, requested to come in. So it became like little background characters. But for Sonic Frontiers, uh, probably not since we haven't done anything like that. At least it's not in the pilot. But who knows? Maybe, maybe. What would be best? As far um, as I know. Sorry. Hmm. No, no, okay. I was just going to say. I was just going to say, as far as I know, the only comment like non Sadium stuff that's been included so far in season three in any form is Knuckles in the season three comic. And uh, along with I don't remember what it was. Oh, yeah. Uh, a couple characters from the Archie comics uh, are being used as cameos in the first episode. I have read exactly. a little bit the uh, season three comic. I know that there was some Sonic Adventure references in there, like uh, uh, To Call's Prayer from SA1 was in there in the comic. Oh, all right. We need more of the comic people up on this panel. <laughs> I'm purely in the, the animation side of things. But, uh, maybe then, maybe it's a possibility. Okay. For well, the... thank you for the answer. I'm sorry, I couldn't. I wish I could have given you a oh, silly of answer. But. And if you count Tangle and Whisper years, years ago, season three did these things for Patreon, which were like, choose which Sonic character will draw in the Sadium style. And they actually drew Tangle in the Sadium style. 
but that's not canon or anything. It's just that's if you look in the season three Twitter, you can find that. Well, thank you. I didn't know that. Yeah. Mm. Oh, thanks for your question. Yes. (laughs) Thank you for doing this panel. It's pretty cool so far. Oh, thank you. (laughs) I'm wondering, should we show these uh, the audience something cool? Like, I don't know. How how many of you them seen the trailer? They've all seen it. Won't bother. (laughs) But maybe we could just stick the link into the the channel uh, into the uh, text part. Yeah. And people yeah. can check it out if they want. We're kind of we're very happy how that came out. Thank I see you. anything in the stream? I yeah. can see it. Yeah, the stream's become floating cubes now for me. For <laughs> <laughs> real, floating cubes. Yeah, it just it just turned into floating cubes. All I just see is loading Discord cubes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's stick it on again. Yeah, let me know if it, this goes out. Is that okay? Does it work? Um. Uh, no, it's still. So yes, yeah, so, as someone says here, yeah, the GameCube loading screen. <laughs> it's like two little GameCube. Bonk. <laughs> One sec, I'll go open the door. Maybe the Wi-Fi can come into the room. <laughs> mm. Yeah, there's like a few people mm. saying they can't see the stream. That's kind of yeah. Thing. Like it was mm. loading at first. Now it's just become <laughs> the GameCube screens. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. It's, someone said some can and some can't. So, <laughs> um, okay. Oh, M said, oh, M said uh, regarding like the comic stuff, she says, we don't do comic stuff. We're purely animation. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, kind of weirdly, Team Season 3 and the actual comic it's based on, the teams are completely separate. Like funding from the Season 3 Patreon goes strictly into the season three animated, which makes sense. While uh, the actual comic that season three is based on, the original season three comic, is its own thing. Mm. Yeah, all funds go to animation, as I'm said. That's mm. why, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, the season three comic's been on hiatus for a while. It's because a lot of the focus is currently on the animated pilot. Ah, that's pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. Hmm. Yeah, it's because the idea is um, comic, you can kind of find people that are passionate enough to make a, a small story. Um, but if you're going to get something animated, it's, it's <laughs> difficult to find some, a group of people that would do 20 minutes of animation out of picture yeah, alone. Was, so. yeah, Keith, Keith was just telling me uh, a day ago about like the the insane cost of it and like how the cheapest like the only studio they could really afford it just wasn't really well i don't know i think keith should say it if you know yeah well we had um we had i don't want to say anything that you don't want me to say that's all right uh yeah it might be uh easier this way um so yeah we did have some talks with some animation studios and get to get quotes off them and of course they so, uh we're giving out you know, very normal prices, some a bit high, like around 500000 for the pilot episode to get it finished. Uh, and others more around the 300000 mark, some $200,000. Um, then we're getting into more of our price range and the lower end of things. And the quality drop was a bit too severe and they, they would produce work that we wouldn't be comfortable fans but, you know it might be questioning where the money was going you know, seeing that quality but of course animation is a very expensive medium normally um so mm. uh in the end decided instead of Getting a product that some of the fans might criticize, not be happy with, you know, up to the same level as uh, the trailer or some of the other work we've been shown off. Um, I decided to personally go out and find animators that I know around the world and who some have worked on the trailer and just make uh, a studio ourselves in a sense. 
get the work done. You know, we needed experienced, high quality animators for cheap, which is impossible. <laughs> so we kind of did the impossible there, mm -hmm. just to keep the quality up. Mm. Very interesting. Um, okay, let's go call up another audience member. Yes. Uh, how about Ooh, scouts here? How about we call up Kelsifer? Come on up here, Kelsifer. Yes. Welcome to the panel. Hold up. All right. Are you guys? Can you guys hear me now? Yep. Yeah. Yes, I, I can. can hear you great. Okay. Hello. Awesome. Um. So the question that I have is, I think it'll be mainly for Keith. Um. I believe you mentioned earlier that um that you had to study like the show's art and the animation style. So I imagine that you also mm -hmm. had to study like the characters, like proportions and, and, and um, expressions and body language, etc. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious to know out of the characters in the show, which one in your opinion is the most complex, like the most complex to figure out the like proportions and expressions and all that. Um, the most complex as in like lineage lines per square inch i guess are the swap box they they're very complex they take a long time to draw because i mean especially with animation you really understand the economy of lines so there was a scene with uh scene 76 i know the number because it took so long to do uh where there was loads of swap box and they were just moving and spinning in the camera a bit and they just took forever to draw. And when you're animating, say you've got like 100 drawings of one character. If you draw a line and you have to match it up 100 times, 100 frames, that one line adds up and takes a long time. So these swap box, they've got loads more lines on all the other characters, just took so much longer. But hardest to, but they're robots, so it doesn't really matter if they're off model. So the hardest one to keep on model and look convincing, I think, is probably Sally Acorn. At mm -hmm. least some of the other artists told me that they've got Sonic, and they can make him look like Star and get more model. Um, Bunny, more or less. But Sally, so there's something about Sally, something about Mary. <laughs> yeah, something about Sally that's a bit tricky. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I guess it's her giant, massive eyes and somehow having to incorporate them in their skulls somewhere with all these facial features yeah. around it. Set in, set in characters acting like bobbleheads. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, and she's got kind of more human proportion body, but it's tiny because she's got a massive head on top. Whereas Sonic is just sort of like human-ish, humanoid body. He's got a big circles. bean. <laughs> so that's kind of a lot easier to draw with. and then he's got like fat chubby legs uh, whereas Sally's got these long legs she's got little knee and then she's got the tibia area and the foot the boot on and little details and then it comes back down here and it's thin on top but it's not too thin I don't know I guess I guess that's why and the same with Bunny because she's just got a a blob on top and a blob here, essentially for the construction, and then you know, chunky robot legs. Mm. It really sounds like you're trying with all your might to not say thick. Hey, that that's really awesome. Uh, th thank you so much for answering my question. Oh, thank you for the question. Yeah, no problem. Um, ever. Have a, have a good one and uh, best of luck. Best of luck on the project. Thank you. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Okay, um, Andrew, would you like to pick the next audience member? Uh, yes, let's go for uh, Ethan. Come on up. I hear nothing. Oh, -oh. it like normally works. It's weird. Okay, let's. No. Okay, let's. Maybe, maybe, okay. Let, maybe rejoin. Yeah, let's move. Let's, yeah, let's yeah, try move again. Them, move them to the audience and then... Let's try this again. Mm, still nothing. Uh, oh, there oh, we go. There you go. <laughs> there we go. There you go. I'm going to put it back in. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, yeah, how are you guys? 
It's uh, great to be here. Uh, Good to see well, you, dude. Yeah, let's see. So uh, I guess I'll go ahead and say that uh, uh, I'm beginning, I'm actually beginning my own animated project based on uh, Sat AM called oh. Hedgehog Act 2, um, which hey. at the moment is a concept trailer for a film uh, finishing up Sat AM's story. And basically what it may look like if it was brought to today's audience, um, taking on such an ambitious project, uh, I'd like to know uh, how all of you manage the workflow amongst the whole team, like how you create connections and uh, connect with others in the industry. So basically, I've uh, taken my experience from working with any industry yeah. and uh, I organize the pipeline and the workflow myself by setting up um, line production software uh, with the help of Megan as well and all the others, Tim and Gloria, chipping in. But mostly um, so we can keep things organized, so we know which shots are being worked on, which are being worked on, by which animator, which artist, who's doing the backgrounds, are they in progress and finished, and you know where to find all the materials. We're, we're renting a server so we can have upload all the, the files uh, and organize them on there. So that's a fly on my screen. It's gone now. And we're just doing, you know, incorporating professional tactics and work methods uh, since it's such an ambitious project and it needs that sort of attention. Right. Because that's the hardest part, right, is finding the right people and knowing where to find them. Uh, yeah, luckily, thanks to I know a lot of people and then we can just use, we've got a, a pretty decent reach. Now. So if we look, send out um, offers and you say we need help, uh, we generally get quite a decent feedback, um, like a lot of people. And then we just have to, you know, the uh, evaluate their portfolios and such is a good one. That's good. All um, right. Yeah. yeah. I hope I, have I guess let me know if it's, uh, it's not enough. Oh, it's fine. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, that, that's really, uh, yeah, I guess it, it's up to every project to figure out. It's like a whole new set of circumstances um, for yeah, everybody. So, so for your project, I'm just wondering if I can tell you anything that would be helpful. Yeah. So, 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 yeah, tell me about your project a bit. What, what, what's, what's your plan? Okay, right. So, um, I didn't have this prepared. Sorry. <laughs> oh, no, it's okay. I'm, I'm glad you're curious, briefly. though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so, basically, I've, I've seen I, some of his project looks great so far. <laughs> Thanks, Jake. Um, oh. But, yeah, basically, uh, so I'm pretty sure a lot of us knew uh, or know that um, Ben Hurst uh, <laughs> once had a chance to continue uh, the story of Sat AM into a film to conclude the story all in one go. Um, mm -hmm. unfortunately that didn't come to pass. Um, so basically I had this idea, like, what if I were to do something like that? Uh, yeah. creating my, well, taking my own creative liberties here and there, um, and basically incorporating some of the classic game elements, which is something that he wanted to do as well at the time, uh, <laughs> to kind of share ideas. I, I, I believe it was with Sega of America or maybe it was Sega of Japan. I cannot remember. If I'm not mistaken, I believe he said that the idea he had was that, well, first of all, he didn't normally look at the games at the time, but that was only right. because he'd only do it if he was under the copyright umbrella of Sega. Uh, and he said that if he did, uh, if he was under it, he would look into all of the games and stuff, uh, take what worked, removed what didn't, while also, you know, respecting it all and everything. Right. Uh, and he said that with the movie idea, the idea was that he was going to essentially, you know, pitch the movie. Uh, the movie could lead to more ideas for the games and it's kind of a mutual benefit thing. That was sort of the idea, I believe, that he had in mind. Yeah. Okay. If I can chip in, uh, yeah. I guess I'd say, I mean, if you're going for feature length, um, like, you know, normal animation quality, uh, just know that it's a huge oh, yes. 
huge undertaking, but maybe I don't know how much experience you have uh, working in industry, um, but it might be a bit too much. Right. It might be well, better to concentrate on something much smaller because uh, even 20 minutes like this is just like, yeah, ridiculous. Well, it's, it's, and that's the plan. In fact, I should have elaborated. Um, I'm going to be starting out with a concept film trailer. Like the, basically this is what the film could look like showing off some of the elements that I want to include and uh, basically get the, get the project around, uh, just see what people think. And yeah. I mean, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, Oh, sorry, Keith. Sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, there you go. might want to consider ways of make simplifying it. Right. Maybe more of a slideshow or, you know, just really figure out a way to, because what we're doing is full animation and you know, full TV animation. Not, um, it's, it's a lot of work. Oh, yeah. uh, but <laughs> well, if you could if you do, do stuff like, very, very if you simple, want to, like maybe either a comic or radio drama or, you know, a fan novella. Hmm. That's what I was thinking. So right now I am actually writing the entire story in my free time. And maybe it might be best to start with a graphic novel of some, uh, some kind online, similar to uh, season three. And, and maybe like enough. after you've done that, you could dub it. And then yeah, that's true. In a way, kind of sort of. Up, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That may be a good way of doing it. Very nice. Definitely recommend that. Cool. Well, thank you. I know there's a lot of other people that need to go. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, thank you for time. It's, uh, it's an honor to talk with another animator. Yeah, definitely. You guys' Thanks. work is looking pretty good. Thank you. All righty. Well, yeah, I'll take care. And keep up the good you work. Too. Yeah. Right, thank you very much. Take care. Yeah. Bye. Okay, looks like we have only one more, one more question we, you guys can take. Um... Let's see. How about we go with Giovanni? I recognize that name. Oh. You too. I'm Levi, actually. I recognize Levi. Hello, everyone. Hello. 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 Hey. Good to see you guys here. Um, yeah, one question for, um, for both, probably both Keith and Jake is, and for the audience to know, um, <clears throat> is that um, what is the likelihood that once the season three pilot episode is released, um, will it, what's the likelihood of being uh, picked up into a full season? The likelihood. Okay, so this is more a Keith thing. Yeah, it's it's difficult. It's difficult. Well, I, I'll tell you what we did manage to do. So we. I know um, a producer, uh, he's a good friend of mine, and we did actually manage to set up a meeting with Sega of Japan um, with uh, broadcasters and TV agents that were very interested. So the, the people want a piece of this because <laughs> it's Sonic, it's a hot IP, especially hot at that time. Uh, just, you know, the first movie was about, um, just come out. Uh, though it's a, the, the hurdle is convincing Sega and getting the IP. I believe at the last minute, they didn't give a reason why, but uh, the the meeting with Sega Japan licensing department, uh, the head of it, because we've been passed up the chain, um, fell through. We don't know why we didn't get a reason. It's disappeared. Uh, and I believe uh, we just have to convince them, them on the response to the pilot episode once it's released. So depending on how well this is really, uh, received once released, then that would really help improve the chances. So if like only a few hundred thousand, uh, a few thousand people watch it, the probably the likelihood is uh, going to be very little. But if millions and millions of people love it and watch it and like it and comment and share and it becomes you know, oh, 
vital sensation or whatever, then the chance it would be quite high. I, it just depends on that, I guess. Um, yeah, fingers crossed. I mean, it looks great. I think it's going to, the story is amazing. That's why I, I wanted to work on it. So I think out of quality, people are going to enjoy it. Just if it gets that, that global um, viewership. Viewing? Yeah. <laughs> you understand me, I hope. Yeah, I understand you, Keith, and um, I believe that the, yeah. um, the success of the pilot episode will <laughs> explode, I hope, and it's not only the US, but the UK, Europe, um, the Far East, and so forth, so hopefully the success of Saturday um, Season 3 pilot will be a grand success. Yes, yeah. I too. Yes, so indeed. Hey. <clears throat> Looks like that's the, that's all the time we have for this panel. Um, I w I want to thank you, Keith and Jake, for for doing this Q and A. <laughs> it was such an honor to be doing this panel with you guys. Oh, no, um, thank you. Sorry if I didn't contribute a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you you oh no you 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 did you did amazing, Jake. Um. Do you guys Thanks. have any final words? Uh, I'll let Jake go first. Uh, well, if you enjoyed this, I definitely recommend you check out the season three project over on, you know, places like Twitter, uh, the website and YouTube. Uh, I'm planning on helping out with more of the YouTube channel, so you can see some pretty exciting stuff there. If you want to see some of the, like, what I guess I've been capable of, I recently released a documentary going over Ben Hurst Vision for the third season of Sat AM. You can find that on my YouTube channel. And I'm pl hoping to bring some of that quality type of videos to the season three channel. And uh, mm -hmm. if you want to hear about my but also my stuff like, you know, I'm also on Twitter as Sadie Amistorian historian in case you want to check that out, but definitely focus on season three and all that. Mm. How about uh, you, Keith? You can awesome. go, Keith. Okay. Yes. Uh, so um, we have a Patreon. Uh, if you just search Team Season 3 with a 3 um, after the A, replacing the S. Um, Patreon. I think you can find some stuff there. It's got lots of interesting bits and bobs, works in progress. If you've been seeing this and looking at like interviews with uh, the um, the cast members, and what else? Our Twitter. Uh, I'd like to thank the audience. It's been really great this time. I've been. I really enjoyed these questions and answering them. So thank you for that. Here, and thanks. To thanks, everyone. <laughs> Leah and Andrew, uh, Leah and Andrew for uh, hosting us. Um, and I feel like I make... focused a lot on myself. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> no, it's like all. We, we, it's great to hear about you. We we, we want to hear about the uh, I know the historian side of things. I mean, your documentary is excellent. So go check it out if you haven't seen it. Mm. Thanks. So thank so thank you guys and of course I want to thank my amazing co-host here Andrew <laughs> for co-hosting yep. this panel with me. So, You're welcome. Um, you want to do a snively to end this off? Yes. You want to do a snively yes. to end this off? Yeah. Um, thank you for listening and coming to the panel. We'll see you next time. <laughs> that was amazing. Um, Beautiful. So come tune in to the Q&A with Cindy Robinson that's going on in the Twitch panel live stream. So, so hopefully you guys enjoy the rest of Revo Online. Bye, everyone. Bye. Uh -huh. Have a great day.